Uh, yeah, can you see my screen and everything are all set? All good. Okay. Um, still see it? Is it full screen now? Okay. All right, the Zoom thing. Uh, yeah, so I'm here to talk about lipid and neotoma integration. Um, thanks, Andre. I, uh, um, this, uh, this is the first time I think I've, I've gotten the linked pollen data, but that's that would be completely reasonable given the, uh, the here we are at a neotoma workshop. Um, so yeah, link, uh, lipid stands for linked uh, paleo data. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a flexible data format that we've been using for the better part of 10 years now um, for a broad array of paleo geoscientific data. Um, as the, the broadest use case so far has mostly been paleo climate data. Um, but throughout much of this time that we've, we've been working with Neotoma to um, develop better interoperability because a lot of tools that are being used and developed by our group and others that um, are, are broadly applicable to paleo uh, geoscientific data uh, broadly. Um, so, um, so yeah, so the idea here is to integrate Neotoma data into this growing lipid ecosystem. So uh, lipid is part of is one of the activities of Linked Earth. Um, Linked Earth is a organization that does all kinds of things in this uh, sort of geoscience, informatics, paleo geoscience, informatics space. Um, but the one that's most relevant, uh, I guess, before that, just uh, so um, Linked Earth is a lot of what we do is led by these three people, myself as well as Deborah Kider and Juliana Milger, who are both at the University of Southern California. So this um, this part is really focused here on these on these utilities and these tools, um, which are these open source analytical packages uh, that that speak um, read and write uh, data in this lipid format. Um, so just briefly uh, about some of these tools which are relevant and that um, integration with uh, Neotom integration with Lipid um, plugs into. Um, uh, one is GeoCoin R, and GeoCoin R is an R package which uh, promotes age and certain data analysis um, in R. Um, some of these are some of the of the tools um, here uh, that, that use, and, and I'll, I'll show a bit more about this later when I show the um, this vignette. Um, another one is called PyloClim, and this is a Python package which is really focused on on time series analysis in Python. But um, it also uh, takes in Lipid data. Um, and then the third is this abrupt change toolkit in R, uh, which is um, under development. And the idea is that it uh, promotes or facilitates uh, various types of abrupt change analyses and uncertainty quantification also in R and also works well with uh, linked paleo data. Um, so yeah, so again, the big goal here is, is being able to have interoperability between lipid and neotoma in both directions, meaning that you could take a Neotoma data set um, and, and simply convert it or pull it into a into an R Python workflow in Lipid um, to be able to use these analytical tools um, and then also be able to go the other direction for the cases where we have databases that are not yet in Neotoma, but that are, that are formatted in Lipid and we like to be able to connect this into the bulk uploader and integrate these data into Neotoma. So um, let's, let's first, Think about this. The pre, two pretty different use cases. Um, so first, thinking about taking Neotoma data, converting it to Lipid, and then using it with um, some of these tools. Um, so I'm going to see if I can open up this. So this is a vignette that um, we put together last year for uh, the EarthCube workshop, um, and I like this because this is. Uh, we walks through exactly the code we would need and how to do it. And so I'm going to sort of scroll through this kind of quickly, but the link is here and the slides are available um, online. And so if you want to come back and, and catch up with this, you can. So this is an example of, of how you might get data from a couple different places, one being Neotoma. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Yes. And one um, and, and other types of lipid data and then plug them into these tools to be able to do some fairly complex analyses pretty simply. So here we're using the Neotoma 2 package to download data and then the Lipid R package to convert those data into Lipid. Um, and so here we can make a simple object with just a couple lines of code. Um, and then we're, here we're looking at this uh, Lake Bambili site um, in equatorial Africa. Um, and so with just a few lines of code, here are the gray blocks or the code blocks here. You can make a map, 
Um, if we wanted to make an age model from this, we can use GeoCarn R, and which has a few tools built into it, which will run the age model and store all the ensembles. Um, so here we're going to run Bacon um, on this on this data site, um, specify some parameters, and then plot this uh, the age depth model here for Lake Bembilly. Um and then uh, so now we have that and we can start to use this age ensemble to run this through so um, this is pulling out some data to be able to look at trees and shrubs making an age and certain plot and then we're going to use actor the abrupt change toolkit to look for abrupt changes in this data set so here we're going to detect shifts in the time series across those age and certain data um, and come up and look and here identify some shifts in mean along with their uncertainties. And obviously I'm going through this quickly, but um, if you're keen to, look, to dig into this more, this, this uh, document is available. Um, so this is exactly what we were envisioning. We we're imagining this as being able to pull data from Neotoma using the Neotoma 2 package and then plug it into these tools which already exist. Okay, let's hop back into here. Um, okay. And then, so then for the other direction, this is a, um, <laughs> uh, more challenging for a number of reasons, mainly because we really need to make sure we're preserving all of the information and there's there's better linkages. Um, it's okay to, if 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 we're if it's a one way path and we're pulling data from Neotoma into these analytical packages, if it's a bit lossy and we're, and there's some information that's not necessary for some of the analyses and we're not maintaining that, that's that's not a problem. Um, but if we want to be able to uh, take data from a different database that may be formatted in or able to export data into Lipid and then ingest that data in Neotoma, we really need to be careful about how those data are being represented. And so this is what we've been working on quite a bit over the past year. Um, the, the primary use case for this is the African Pollen Database, which is uh, being has been developed in a um, sort of a, a bespoke format that is, but can export into Lipid, and we want to be able to translate that into Neotoma. So we've been working a lot um, with that. Um, there's another database uh, that I'm involved with, um, with this like this is Lakes 3D project in New Zealand, uh, which again also is uh, going to be have the data be able to be formatted in Lipid, and we'd like to ultimately be able to translate that into Neotoma um, and upload it into Neotoma um, as efficiently as possible. Um, and so having this pathway and connecting this with the new Neotoma 2 package and with the bulk uploader um, is just another way of being able to better integrate a diversity of different types of data into, into Neotoma. Um, so yeah, so that's the uh, what I want to go over and um, I'm happy to chat with folks later um, or offline um, if that's if you have other questions or want more information about what we're doing. <laughs>